Back when phones looked like this, there was just one giant landline monopoly. Now, there are four nationwide wireless carriers, and consumers are texting, Skyping, drawing, and even sending heartbeats. So how did we get here? To answer that, we have to go back over 100 years. U.S. regulators decided to let AT&T, the largest provider, have a monopoly in exchange for heavy government oversight. Business boomed as more people began using telephones. The AT&T monopoly, known as Ma Bell, worked for a while. But critics said the lack of competition stifled innovation, and the government wanted the private sector to capitalize on a new developing technology, wireless phones. So in 1984, government pressure forced AT&T to break into seven regional baby bells and later gave them access to wireless airwaves. And the companies used it. Now that's a bell Atlantic community. Can you hear me now? In 1984, Motorola debuted the first cell phone available to the public, more than a decade after they invented it. The two pound, 13 inch brick phone was a real game changer. Is there a tougher cellular phone out there? New technology wasn't the only factor. In 1996, Congress allowed the seven baby bells to start buying each other. And soon, pieces of Ma Bell came back together. In 2000, Bell Atlantic and GTE merged to become Verizon, while other deals created T-Mobile USA. SBC bought AT&T in 2005 and kept the name. That same year, Sprint merged with Nextel. In mergers and acquisition departments around the country, the phones were ringing off the hook. And then one day in 2007, something happened that would turn the telecom business upside down. And we are calling it iPhone. The iPhone turned millions of customers into smartphone users. And with that came more demand for data. Now, with a limited number of new customers, the scramble is to appeal to the digital age. For AT&T and Verizon, that means moving into other industries like video and advertising. The two smaller players, Sprint and T-Mobile, have danced around the idea of merging. But as the number of telecoms potentially shrinks, regulators will have to consider whether the new giants are fostering competition or stifling it. Their answer could shape the industry and the way we communicate for another 100 years.